Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, I've got a multimeter review. The Kaiweetz HT-118E. It's a new model. What they did is they, they improved how many digits. So you get 20,000 counts. That's pretty awesome. You may have seen me take it out of this box in a couple videos ago. They gave it to me as a gift along with this shirt. So I thought I'd wear the shirt with the meter. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the upgraded model. Now, this HT118 has been a very successful meter. It's, it, the price is awesome. I want to say it's around $35, or something like that, on sale. I think it's usually on sale around $35. It's a very rugged, very you know ergonomic meter. It's just designed really nicely. The di dial, just everything about it is just real nice. Dual display, the lighted thing, the non-contact -ta touch voltage, you know, the place to put the probes, your hanging thing for your, you know, if you want to hang it with a magnet or, or some kind of latch or something. You got a flashlight on it, you know, nice kickstand. Just everything about the meter is just really nice. It does have the milliamp and the amp uh, inputs. So it's, they just did a lot of nice things with this meter. Well, now they've upgraded it to 20,000 counts. So that's pretty amazing. Now, most meters are 6,000 count, I would say. I would say most meters are 6,000 counts. With the more digits you get, the more resolution you get, right? And so, like even this Fluke 7 which I got to bring out because... You know, a lot of people know about this meter. This defaults to 6,000 counts. That's kind of crazy, huh? For all the money you spend on something like this, it's only 6,000 counts. It's actually 20,000 counts. I'll bet you a lot of people don't even know that. You put in high res mode, you get 20,000 counts. You get more digits. But why do they have this um, default thing to 6,000 counts? Well, that's because... It's this thing was designed like I, 22 years ago, something like that. It was the first one was made. Um, it's kind of older technology, right? It's slower. So some people are impatient. They want their readings right away. So they said, well, let's go 6,000 because we can do the math and show the d digits for that real quick to auto range and, and to show those extra digits, you know, for 20,000 count. That's going to take us a little more time. So. I think that's why they did it. Uh, so I think I will use that meter to compare to this new 20,000 count. I think I'll also have the Habo test just so you can see if there are any differences. So the Kaiweetz version of this HT-118A, from what I understand, there's some uh, slight differences. One of them is that when you put on the backlight on this meter, I, I, I'm thinking it's on for about five or ten seconds and then it turns off, which is fine if you just need to see the reading, turn on the display and do it. But if you're in an area where you really can't see that great, maybe you're in your furnace room, whatever, maybe you're outside working on your car, uh, yeah, it's kind of frustrating. You have to keep on hitting that button. And as far as I know, there's not a way to, you know, to turn it on by pushing one of the other buttons and bypassing that mode where it just stays on. Where some meters you can do stuff like that. This one, I believe, when you turn on the display, it'll stay on. Okay, It just turns on until you turn it off. Now, the negative about that could be that it's going to drain your battery. But anyway, I think I'd prefer that. So, I think that's the way this one is. And other than that, it's 20,000 counts. And... Uh, We'll, we'll just see how these meters, you know, measure and look compared to each other. And I think to the Fluke 87, just so you can see two 20,000 count meters side by side, okay? And also compared to 6,000 count meter. And you can see what that display with that extra 20,000 counts does for you, okay? So let's just do that. These are self-certified. But in lower cost meters... That's what you're often going to find. You're going to find CE mark, which is a self-certification. But that certification is for, you know, it, it really gives you confidence when you're a Category 3, you're an electrician working on lighting, 
like you're on the other side of these 15 amp breaker panels, you're in places where there's more energy and there's more potential for transients that come through and hit your meter. In a bench area like this, category one, category two, you don't have that issue. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's why they have these category ratings. When you're on the other side of the meter outside your building, that's category four, that's very scary stuff. You're wearing gloves, all this protective gear, and you're for sure using meters that are super safe. So I do want to bring up the safety factor. These are not uh, UL or ETL approved or any other agency. It's just self-approved uh, CE, which if your company does not fly by night, you know, which Kiwitz has been around and they're selling a lot of equipment, you know, like these power supplies and such, and even handheld tools, you know, they're not going to take a chance and have somebody injured, I don't think. So I, I believe their meters are, are probably pretty safe, you know. I haven't heard anything otherwise. I'd like to know if you guys comment down below if you've ever heard of any meter uh, causing, you know, damage or danger to someone. Now, I know it's happened. And anyway, let's not go down that road any farther. I think we're good enough. These are bench top meters. Totally, I feel totally safe using these at a bench. And so let's come over here and let's test it and see what it looks like, okay? Let's do it. All right, guys, so this is the box opening. Let's just see what's in the box. Just want to show you the box, actually. Just a quick, you know, look-see. So you can see what the box is like. And there we go. Let's get rid of the box. And here we go. Look at this. First of all, Actually a nice pouch. I like this because you actually have a pocket here. We got some batteries. We're gonna definitely use those batteries. We don't throw away batteries until they're gone bad, right? Even if they go bad in first week. We want to get the use out of them. I hate that when I see people just take good batteries and throw them away. Um, we don't want to fill up our trash with bad batteries. And look, there's a manual. It's actually fairly thick. Okay, so Put that in there and look at this this bag has a nice band to hold your thermal couple see that we got the banana plugs on one end and we got the little thermal device on the other end here let's just take this out of here there we go okay yeah those are nice we'll test those out uh, do a quick test on them at least and here, let's just pull these out of here. They're not silicone, you can see. As soon as I let them go, see how they, they don't just straighten out. But they're not the stiffest leads I've ever seen. I think we know where those leads come from. Now, my lab's also kind of cool in here, but look. They actually do straighten out, which there's some other leads that you may have seen me test that they are so hard to straighten out. So we got some nice tension relief here on the uh, cords. Let's see on this end. Yeah, not bad. Now the one thing about these leads, they do have the you know the cap uh, three, cap four little protector things on there, which you're supposed to use those if you're in those environments. But we're not going to be. But you know what? Still. If you're just probing around and you don't want to short things, you can use those caps. I pretty much rarely or never do. Super sharp leads. These things are nice and grippy. They're pr it's kind of a, a little bit of a soft plastic. See how I can scratch it? A little bit of a soft plastic, but not so much that they're going to bend. Um, yeah, so nice little finger grip there to keep your finger from sliding forward yeah your basic test leads let's see and these are the kind with the uh, little four prongy things that kind of get squished in if you know what I'm talking about so some of them are just one split these have the uh, crosshair split so there we go take those off and there's our meter. Let's take out the bag. 
check it out we got a QC pass quality control now it looks like it has the same stand I'm glad they didn't change that because that's a nice stand and this is also a nice little slot here to uh, either hang it or use this little guy here to this is a little bit stiffer plastic by the way this rubberized thing here it's kind of a block so if you want to just hang it by something there or if you want to use this to put a strap in to hang a magnet you can do it that way and then your flashlight of course and again softer here and this is actually fairly soft here so no problem putting the lead in there sometimes you want to put it up like up the, like this so you can use as a third hand to just hold the meter and touch say a neutral of a you know whatever so um, alright we're gonna have to put some leads in here. I was just looking they, they, they do have the clear plastic around here so I do imagine they're gonna light up like the other ones did so from the face plate all I can tell that's different from this okay look you can see that there's a little different LCD color to it. This one's kind of got a different color to it than this one. This one may be a little orange or something, right? The Apple test. The buttons look like the same. Same kind of feel to them. Same shape. Same everything. Displays the same size. Uh, the colors, the marking around here looks the same. The only thing that looks different is this marking right here. It says 20,000 counts. Down here it looks the same. I believe it looks. Yeah, it looks the same. Nope, one difference. 600 milliamps on this one and 200 milliamps on this one. So this is a 200 milliamp range instead of 600 milliamp range. Now, that might be nice because if you're in a low milliamp range, you might get better resolution. So we're going to check that out, especially with the 20,000 count. That might be why this 200 milliamp is. This is 6,000 count, so might be why, the, you know, so the resolution on this one's probably not going to be as good. We'll, we'll check that out, okay? So there you go. They, uh, the little piece up here, this little hard plastic piece that has an antenna in it, it's the same thing. Yeah. They look the same, right? So nothing has changed except they did change this to say 200 milliamps. Another thing, 200 milliamp fuses are actually a lot easier to find. But I don't know if that's why they did it. I think it has to do with the 20,000 count. So we're going to put batteries in it and come back. Alright guys, I took off the door, the battery door. It just kind of drops in like that with these two little clips and then drops down. We have the threaded insert. Uh, but the screw is not retained in the thing, which you know most meters I've found are not. But it's really nice when you find one that is. Anyway, it takes two double A's. And you can see the battery compartment is isolated from the circuit board. I can see the circuit board right down there. So if they were to leak, it could leak down in there. But for the most part, it's uh, sealed. Except for these two windows. So we just drop the batteries in. So we, before we put it back together... What I want to show you is when you put this door down, it kind of holds this rubber in place because it, it fits tight in there. So when you take it off, you can see how this boot comes off like that. And you can break it free up here. And it fits in there really snug. So yeah, you kind of have to get your fingers in there, your fingernails, and pull this up out. But I think... From what I remember is taking off the top part I don't know what's easier actually because it's not easy to get this boot off so yeah you can see how well that that thing fits on and uh, you know this is pretty rigid right back here it's pretty thick so that thing there is gonna hold it well if you hold it from there and I got two more screws here and two screws here, and I think it'll come apart. All right, so got the screws out, and it feels pretty snug. And you can see these deep channels, right? They kind of set in. All right, and that's kind of what I remember from 
opening up this guy. It's pretty clean layout. We have two ceramic fuses. I do not think these are high rupture capacity types because they're not, there's no writing on them or anything. Well, actually there is on the metal part like there usually is, but there's none on the ceramic part where the high rupture fuses usually have that. So you can see how the plastic barrels hold the metal, the split, it's kind of got a split here, but it holds it um, tight so it's not gonna get spread out. Here's the current shunt right here. And then we have some large um, MELF resistors. They're the round resistors. We refer to them as MELF resistors. And then here's the uh, diodes for the current sense uh, protection for you know surge protection. And then we have a couple of small PTCs here. Here's our springs for our power to come in the board. And if we look at this side, we just see these two flat tabs. So it looks like it's going to make good contact and here's our lens for our flashlight and there's our LED for our flashlight. Alright guys, so it took eight screws, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to get the board out and then I just kind of slowly pulled it up and pulled the antenna out of this part and that's as far as I've gotten so far. And you can see it has those little spring clips here for the sensing and the normal carbon, um, you know, silicon type switch there. So you can see all the reinforcements. You can see the where the LEDs shine through. Here, let me see if I can flip it over. See what's on this side. So we have four LEDs that light up these terminals. These are called light bars because the light shines in there, goes across and lights up the thing. So those are called light bars. We have four of those. I have some grease here I'm trying not to touch. I kind of hit it with my little finger a little bit. But you can see how clean this side of the board is. There's not much there. There's contacts for the buttons. There's these split kind of, you know, terminals that get squished into those plastic terminals and we have our display which I want to be careful not to well it actually I could actually clean it from the outside because it's not the kind that has the the window so that's good because sometimes you get dust stuck there is the bottom side of the board not much to it you can see the zebra stripe just on one side just here on the bottom there's one little dimple right here on this display that has a hole right there, right here, so it finds itself. And then there's one right here. So just line those up so they snap in. And that's where that gets tight. So make sure your display's on correctly. All right guys, so this is the uh, antenna for the voltage sensing. Then our LED and our buzzer, of course. Looks like a little power supply over here with the inductor. Then we have a 4 megahertz crystal to run this uh, chip that's taking all our measurements. See a bunch of MELF resistors over here, the large resistors. Then I see ceramic capacitors. I don't see any aluminum electrolytics, which is nice because they're the things that can change over time. So we just have a bunch of ceramics. So that's a nice thing. Now this chip up here Looks like it's been whitewashed, so we can't see what it is. Same with this chip. We can see that chip, but that's just a small support chip. And then this chip, we can see that's, I, I suppose, a display chip. And there we go. So there's our diode set up. There's our small PTCs. They're not very big. So we don't see any MOVs or TVS diodes or anything like that. We see the diodes here for the current sense, but not for the, you know, the voltage over here. All right, guys, see, I took off the diodes. See that little spring in that hole? And that spring in that hole? Well, see those little ball bearings? They sit on top of that, and that's what gives you that little clicking feel when you move this. See the little indents on the dial? So, that's why I really dislike taking these things apart because it's kind of a pain 
sometimes to get those back in place. Alright guys, so I just want to show you that underneath the fuse, it tells you what it is. This is a 200 milliamp and this is a 10 amp, okay? So you can always, you know, if you pull both fuses out and you forget which one's which, it'll tell you. So that's nice. And these are both 250 volt fuses. Now here's the 10 milliohm current sense shunt, which I like the surface mount ones because I feel like they're going to be dead on versus those metal ones that they have to trim. But maybe, I don't know. Anyway, I like these. But what I do want to point out is the Cat 3, Cat 4. You know, that's highly suspect when you don't see MOVs and protection for voltage transients. For our bench work, Category 1, Category 2, which is what we do on the bench, some people say high voltage, like meaning 120, 220. That's, to me, that's not an issue when you're at the bench because it's all current limited, energy limited on the bench. That's why it's category one and category two. And you know, when you snap this back together, it snaps back and it's very tight and very rigid meter. There's no, there's no flex in that. So yeah, well-made meter. By the way, I kind of popped it back open again because I wanted to show you something. These fuses have those little stoppers on the end. So if you were to drop the meter, it's going to slide and hit these stops. Sometimes a meters have the plastic, you know, stops that, you know, in the case it comes down and they act as barriers plus they act as stops. But the way this is designed, you got the plastic around here. And so there's really a lot of isolation with this fuse and up here again plastic around here nothing around here so there is a lot of isolation this fuse is going to sit down here and this one's going to sit down in here so there is the features built into this and let's see and it looks like this boss right here i was trying to see if it lines up i think it lines up right over that little plastic peg that comes through the board yeah it looks like it lines up that way so it pushes on that so you kind of get an idea you know where things are placed so there is you know some isolation and features in this plastic you can see um, it, it is very rigid so there you go just want to point that out all right got it back together there's the stand that's what it looks like then it drops down and it fits in that, like that. But you know what? I got to take the stand back out to get the plastic uh, to get this back on because those little things, these little things right here, fit down tight. So but I just kind of wanted to show you what it looks like all together. Now, one thing some people point out is you don't see shielding in some of these low cost meters, but you know, under 100 bucks, yeah, you're not going to see that. Probably even under two or 300, you're not going to see that. And by the way, some meters that have lots of shielding, like the Fluke 87s, they do a good job. They do a lot of filtering, but check this out. Just rubbing my finger across. You can see it picks up. I can change the reading just by doing that. So sometimes meters, even with lots of shielding, you can see how just my, my body can change the reading so you know really as far as the shield anything goes I haven't really ran into an issue before if you're in environments where there's lots of radiation well then you're gonna need uh, you're, you're gonna have to do something uh, meter leads are pretty long so if you're up next to something that's putting off some magnetic field or electric field you can you know clip the meters on to what you want to read and then move the meter away from the instrument but yeah I just wanted to point that out that even when you have spent a lot of money on an expensive meter like this the shielding isn't perfect all right guys so let's go ahead and power this thing on and watch for the LEDs it's it's a neat feature on this meter it's a nice way that just tells you hey put the leads here so turn on volts they all light up and then look at that these two flash and say hey put the leads here so millivolts yep still put them there yep still pretty much everything but current right okay now we're at current 
and we're milliamp. Well, I'm on micrograms, so it says put it here. Milliamps. And then amps. And look, non-contact voltage. Doesn't say to put them anywhere. Now if I hit this button to go to live, let's see what happens. Look at that, it tells you to put in the positive. Some meters you put in the ground, but this one's telling you to put in the positive. So, actually let's go to ohms. Let's go to continuity for fun, since that's an easy thing to test right off the bat, right? Okay, let's hit the function to go to, hey, you know what? Let's test something. I'm in the auto, you know, I'm in continuity, right? The sound. So let's turn it, turn it back, and it doesn't remember where I was. A lot of meters don't. I just want to test this one just to see if that was a going to be a super cool feature that they added. But yeah, especially low cost meters, but even higher cost meters, a lot of meters do not do that. For instance, uh, let's go to fluke. Okay, ohms. Let's go over here to capacitor. Okay, we're in capacitance. Go back here, go back. It's back to ohms. So even an expensive mirror like this, you know, back in 20 years ago, whenever they, 22 years ago when they came up with this, they never thought of doing that or it was just too much work. But some of the nicer new meters today will actually remember where you like to use the meter and you know it'll it'll save that setting which is cool okay continuity now this one is anything less than I believe it's 20 ohms okay is is gonna give you a beep okay you gotta go in continuity and can you hear that it's pretty loud right and you can tell it's latching right it's pretty obvious when it's latching or not latching because you get that scratchy sound, you know. No, nope, that's latching. Now, I'm not going to do this fire stick thing because that's ridiculous. That's actually embarrassing to watch people do that. You should never take readings in some half-assed fashion like that. It's always a purposeful reading. Okay, guys, that stupid fire stick thing. God, that's gotten to be embarrassment that that's caught on and all the reviewers like to do that. So by the way, the speed of the meters, uh, three times a second it updates pretty fast, okay? And now one thing about leads, it's nice to clean some alcohol, just because sometimes there's residue. I, I'm not sure what it's from, from the plastic forming or whatever, but I don't feel it on these leads, but sometimes you feel that kind of greasy feel. But yeah, anyway, that's something you want to clean off. Okay, what's another quick one? Another quick one is the backlight. Let's turn that on. Okay. Here, let me turn one light away at least. That looks like a nice even, kind of a nice bluish tint to it, right? But it's a nice even light. And it doesn't turn off when you switch, you know, settings. Love the dual display, by the way. Look at that. It's telling me the temperature. I always love that when it tells you the temperature with, without even a thermal probe in there. Okay, now the other thing that has a flashlight, right? You hold that down for a moment. And you can see the flashlight there. It's not super bright, right? It's not very bright at all, actually. It's just, you know, it's there. So if you're in a dark space, I have to... I got a lot of lights in this lab, so... Um, I'm not sure how I can show you that. Maybe you can see it in the box there. So, I mean, it's there, right? You don't want it to be too bright because it wear out your battery. The other thing is this thing turns off after 15 minutes, you know, saves its battery, right? But if you don't want it to do that, a lot of times when I'm at the bench, I'm working, I don't want my meters turning off automatically anymore. So... I just want to turn them on and leave them on. So one thing, the backlight stays on. That's great. Love that. The other thing is hold the function button down when you turn it on. It gives you kind of a beep, but then it turns off the automatic sleep mode. Okay? And then to turn it back on, you have to turn the meter off. Oh, and by the way, look at all those digits. Okay? We got four digits across here.
So we're gonna we're gonna check that out and compare it to um, the other meters. But here, let me just pull this up. Let's put them both on. See the four digits after the decimal point on this one. So it's after the decimal point. It's giving you four digits resolution. This one gives you three. Hey, another thing is. So I think the height Kiwitz meters default to DC, but the Habo test defaults to AC, as you can tell. And I have to hit my function key to get that dual display on this one. But yeah, the display does look a little nicer though, right? Um, I mean, as far as the color and stuff and clarity, I think it does. But uh, as far as that resolution, you know, those digits, this digit here on the end, when you look at the specifications of any meter, they'll say, say 0.2% overall tolerance, right? But then it'll say plus or minus two digits. So that means like this one, how it's moving, it could be two digits up, two digits down. So this last digit is the least accurate of any in any multimeter, okay? Fluke 87, any multimeter. The last digit's always the least accurate just because of the tolerance plus the plus minus uh, digit uh, tolerance thing. So when you have an extra digit here, you got four places, seems kind of crazy. But what's nice is you know that last digit, you don't really have to care about that because you still have three good ones. And here you have two good ones. So if you're thinking of it that way, you can see why having 20,000 counts is nice. All right, guys, let's take some quick measurements. Now, we're in the millivolts, 160 millivolts, roughly, right? Now, just to give you some accuracy, I, I think when we're reviewing meters, we should tell you what that uh, tolerance is so you know how close it's supposed to be. Okay, so the Fluke 87 we're using because we're going to put in the high-res mode, so it's 20,000 counts, same as this. Right now, it's 6,000 counts. That's the default. This one's the old A version 6,000, and we have 20,000. So you can see the four digits after decimal point. Now remember what I said, the last digit on all these meters is the one that fluctuates the most, is the one that's most inaccurate. So really we have two good digits, and three good digits here, and two here, okay? We're gonna put this high res just a moment, but what I wanted to uh, tell you is that the accuracy, this is, 0.08% plus uh, five digits, okay? So see this last digit? That go up or down five digits, okay? Plus it's 0.08%. Uh, so it's better than, uh, I mean, that's pretty darn good, right? 0.08, it's better than 0.1%. So pretty darn good. Now, here, and this one is, it's a lot more expensive, but it's more accurate, 0.05, and it's one digit. So this third digit here is, is uh, can change one digit. So we would think that this one's gonna be more accurate, okay? Now let me put in high res mode. It says high res, and now we got our four digits, like this one, okay? And you can see I'm kind of jumping around, okay? Now I'm gonna bring up the voltage just a little bit. Okay, now once it goes over 20,000 counts, let's see what happens. Now, another thing I want to point out, look at the bar graph here. We've only got a couple of bars here, and we, we actually see some bars here, some bars here. So we're seeing, <clears throat> we're seeing some pretty good resolution on the bar graph here, but the bar graph here, it, it has, uh, you know, it's got a lot of, travel to uh, go so you don't get as much resolution okay so right there you saw it change over right now we lost a digit so now we got three digits and you can see it's less sensitive now that we're in the volt so in the middle volts it's real sensitive they're bouncing around but less you know and look we got three digits so now the 20,000 count looks like a you know, 6,000 count, right? Okay, let's go up. I'm going to go up, you know, I'm going up fairly smoothly and fast just so you can see how fast the meters move. And then I'm pausing just so you can see I'm 
rest. Now, th there we had 20,000 counts again. So let me just go down a little bit. Okay, we got our three digits back, right? Three digits and only two over here. But once we go over 20,000, so there's 18, 19, and 20,000. So we drop back down. So remember this digit over here can be off by five digits. This one can be off by one digit. So, and then plus the tolerance, right? And then I'll just go up and there we go. So I want to point out that some meters, once you get over about 32 volts, you'll see a high voltage sign. So that's nice that the fluke shows that. We haven't seen that in the other meters, okay? I'm going to go to another power supply so I can go a little higher in voltage. All right, that's about as high as I can go. I'm going to drop down fast. Well, actually, I'm going to kind of wiggle it around just so you can see. I'm going to move it up and down so you can kind of see the bar graph and see the digits move, okay? Okay, now I'll stop. And you can see they're all pretty fast, right? Now you can see if this was five digits off over here, we would be two eight two nine, and this could be two seven two, you know nine. So you can see that the accuracy is about you know right in right in line with what they should be. Now you notice the flukes, when they change auto ranges, they go blank, and then they come back. See how it does the OL thing? And the or else it just goes blank. Seems like when you go down, it goes blank, but when you go up, it does the OL. So that's always been one of those things about flukes, which kind of bug me sometimes, because you have to sit there and wait where... You know, the Kaiweech just continually scrolls up and down, right? Okay, I'm going to go down to zero, or close to it. Now, you can see that we have three digits plus one. So, this one here, that last digit, like I said, the accuracy is off. So, it should be rounding to, you know, one. If this was a nine, right? That should be a one. And this one's, you know, these guys are both the green. So... You just kind of lose that accuracy of that last digit, kind of my point. So I'm going to bring it up just really a little bit if I can. Okay, because usually the really low voltages are the ones that you can kind of see how sensitive and accurate the meters are. And you can see that they, they actually, like these two actually look really close. And this one's not bad for a 6,000 count meter. But now look, let me take this back to 6,000 count. And now it looks like this guy, right? So let's go back. High res. Now we could actually go to millivolts, right? Remember that one, I have to go back to DC. Again... You know, the bar graph on this one, they just used the whole graph for this one. You have to go full, to the full range to get up here, so I think you get a little more resolution with this bar graph. I'm just kind of bouncing down here at the low side. Okay, here, let me take it slowly up. See, then we're at 20,000 counts, so this wants to go to volts now because we're past the millivolt range. Whereas 6,000 count will go up higher in millivolts. See, once we go to 600 millivolts, then it switches. But you get the higher resolution with 20,000 counts, but then at the same time, you only go to 200 millivolts. But, you know, it's a trade off between resolution and range. Which, you know, might be counterintuitive. But anyway, so there we go. There's volts. Just wanted to show you that, okay? Okay, let's do some ohm readings real quick, okay? I got these, uh, you know, pretty high 
accuracy resistors 0.05% and so we got 10.08 on the fluke and we got 10.08 and then it kind of drops well it kind of bounces around a little bit and if I leave it there it'll settle out around 9.96 kind of interesting all right, so I want to call out the accuracy numbers, which I think we should all do when we review these meters. Uh, the fluke is 0.2%, and in the 600 ohm range and down, you know, 600 ohms and down, it's 0.2% uh, plus two digits. So the digit over here can be two digits off, okay? The uh, Kiwitz is actually not near as good. It's 1% plus 15 digits. So these could be 15 digits off right here. So plus it's 1% versus 0.2% here. So yeah, so 9.93 on a 10 ohm resistor, right? Let's go back to here. So now this could be off by two digits right here. So it could be 10.07 or 10.06, I guess now. And also it's 0.2%. So there you go. Okay, now we have the 100 ohm. Again, 0.025%, very accurate resistor, okay? And look, 100 ohms. Now, we're still in that same tolerance range because we're still in the same range for the meters, okay? So it's interesting. It starts off a lot more accurate than, than it kind of drops in value. So... With the Kiwitz, I think when you first plug in, take that reading because that's the more accurate reading. 99.86. So, yeah, there we go. All right, guys, now a 10K, 0.025% resistor. And look at that. Now it actually, you know, now, okay, sorry, in the 10K region, let me tell you what the accuracy is. Okay, so for all the resistors in the Kiwitz, it's 1% plus 15 digits. So these could be 15 off. So it could be, you know, under 10K or 10.01, you know, but still, you can see it's still very accurate even if, even if you take that into account. Here's the table right here for resistance. 1%, 15 digits. Now for the Fluke, just show you that. Uh, for the 10K, we're in the under 60K, so it's 0.2% one digit. And look at that. It's almost perfectly 10K. Still, not bad. So the low values, like I say, low value set readings are more difficult meters. That's why I was doing the low value. And now we have 100K, 0.025%. Again, very accurate. Now... By the way, you may have noticed, what I did is I tied the two negatives, so all I have to do is go back and forth the red one. If I left both red ones in, the meters would try to read the resistance of each other, so that doesn't work. That's why I've had to do it this way. So 100K again, you know, at 100K, we are, again, now we're at 0.6% one digit, 0.6% one digit. And that looks pretty darn good, right? So this last digital here, you can see how sensitive the, lead, the meter is, even though it has shielding, it's kind of sensitive. Here, let's come over here and see if the fluke, or the kiwitz is sensitive. Look at that. Uh, after we get to the larger values, it seems to be very close. Uh, 200K up to 200K, it's still, again, like I said, in all cases, 1% plus 15 digits. So, yeah, it's right there with the fluke now. And does it change? And it's all, it changes, yeah, it changes too. Not as much as the fluke, I don't think. Oh, I think I heard somebody say they want to see a large value resistor. Okay, let's try this one. Simpson. You guys know Simpson, right? <laughs> All right, so there we go, six mega ohms. Well, here, should I hold? I gotta stop moving, I guess. So large values are sensitive too. Sometimes, you can, well, you can see that move a little bit, but here, let's try this. Come on, fluke. Okay, it's settled down. 
You can see it kind of bounces around that way too. Pretty sensitive actually. All right, so let's see what it says for mega ohms. Okay, up to six meg. So we're right on the boundary of a range where it wants to go to 50 meg. So at 6% or 0.6% one digit. And again, you know, the Kai Wheat, same thing. One, well, actually, it does change for these higher megs. Like, when, once you go up to 20 meg or down, it's only 3%, 25 digits. And we're reading 6 megs, so we're up here in the 20 megs. So, yeah, 3%, 25. It actually did re really well, right? All right, guys, so for current, what we're going to do is I got a power supply up there. We're going to come into the... Well, I go through the resistor bank, then I have the resistor bank into the milliamp, microamp range, right? Same same input. Out the common, back to the microamp, milliamp on the fluke, and then out the common, back to the power supply, okay? One thing I want to point out is with the Kiwits, when I switch it, it says, the lights up these two is green, if you can see that. So it says, hey, put them there. But it doesn't give you a warning that you got them in the wrong spot. With the fluke, it says, hey, you got it in the wrong spot. So, oh, let's go to microamp, though. It doesn't, huh, it was okay. Oh, yeah, milliamps and microamps. So it's funny because this plugs milliamps, microamps. You'd think that this would be milliamps, microamps, and this is amps, and that would be amps. But it's kind of funny how milliamps up here, but it shares the microamp. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Here, let me get that glare off the screen. All right, so hey, as far as tolerance goes, um, DC current, the Kiwits for all currents except for 10 amps is 0.5% plus five digits. 10 amps is 1%, 15 digits, okay? Let's see the fluke. It is, you know, under 600 microamps. It is 1%, so not quite as good, but plus two digits. So. Yeah, it's not quite as good for the microamps. Yeah, the, it has milliamps and amps right here. And so, yeah, so it's 0.2% for milliamps and amps. And 600 microamps and up to 6 milliamps, it's 1%. Wow. All right. So 39.91, 39.0. Yeah, so they're pretty darn close. You can see how they both move pretty quick and they both settle pretty fast. The fluke, again, when you go through that range change, it goes blank when you go down and OL when you go up. So now we're 1.3 milli milliamps. Just see now how high the microamp scale goes, and okay, they both blink out at at twenty thousand. So in this case, it's they're both given twenty thousand counts. It looks like. Okay, let's go to milliamps. We stay in DC. Milliamps. It defaults AC. Got to go to DC. So I like that the Kiwit stays in DC. Defaults in DC for things. Okay, I'm going to drop it down back in microamps. Just see how. Good, they do in milliamp range. Okay, I'm going to just bounce it around. You can see we have more bars on this guy. The It continues to have more resolution than the bar graph, I think. Okay, now let's see. Once we get up to 20, it's we're going to lose that digit, right? So we got 20,000 counts on both. I thought we lost it, but I guess we still haven't, Kiwits. 14073. Now, supposedly, uh, the Kiwits is higher tolerance than these low ranges. Okay, as we get to 20, we'll see it switch. 
All right, guys, I'm going to use the load bank to switch to see how fast it moves. Okay, I guess we lost the 20,000 count. We're still under uh, 20 millivolts, so. Okay, now we lost in the Kiwis. That was interesting. We lost in the Fluke first. I mean, we weren't even at 20 yet. Okay, I'm just changing my load bank so I can switch so you can see how fast the meters are. And you can see the fluke has to change ranges and it blinks out or does the OL thing. So, yeah, interesting, right? All right, guys, so here's what I've done is I've got the reds all tied together, the blacks all tied together. I got the AC power, red one coming to the Kiwitz black, uh, you know, the other, well, liner neutral, one of them coming to the Kiwitz, one of them coming to the fluke, the black side and the red side. So that way you can't say that, you know, if I put them both on the Kiwitz, it, it had the reading first or whatever. I mean, they're all in parallel. They're all getting readings. And I put a Klein here just for fun, 6,000 count meter, okay, AC. And I did that because somebody said that the Fluke was so much faster than the Klein that they couldn't stand the Klein, they had to take it back. So they spent rather spend 400, 500 bucks on this versus like, I forget what the price on this was, under 100 bucks or something like that. Anyway, I thought that was kind of crazy because they are so close in speed. So I thought we'd just do that and you can watch this. I'm gonna turn on the switch, my power supply, and we'll see the AC voltage come up. Okay, here it goes. You'll hear it click on. Pretty darn, I mean, they're pretty darn fast, I, I think. I mean, maybe the client comes up just right after the fluke, but they are so close. You'd have to be so picky to care about that. Now, also, you notice the Kiwits, here, let's do it again. And also going to zero, Klein goes to zero much faster because the fluke has to change ranges. It goes blank and then it shows zero. So let's watch that again. So close to coming on and then turning off. Zero, boom. So yeah, I don't know. I think it's pretty close to a tie anyway. Um, they're all pretty fast. Okay, now look at the Kiwitz and the Fluke. They're almost identical, right? Except for the Kiwitz is faster, it's showing zero. The Fluke is slow, going back to zero. Also, Kiwitz, a dual display, you get the 60 hertz. Right? And over here, you have to come up and hit the hertz button. And then you have to go back to see volts. Okay? Now... You get the lightning strike, but here you get a nice orange display. So, and let me turn away one of my lights. Yeah, the fluke is slow going to zero. Oh, I'm at percentage of... Uh... Okay, there we go. Okay, let's do that again. Man... It says millivolts, but the switch is open, so there's no volts there. Now, for AC voltage accuracy, let's look at that. The Kiwitz is 1% plus 25 digits on all uh, ranges, okay? All right, and the Fluke is actually worse. It is, well, it's actually got a different frequency, sorry. Over here, it's actually better. It's 0.5% uh, plus two digits on all ranges, but... Um, it changes with frequency up to 1k to 5k it goes to 2% up to 1k it's 1% the Kiwitz goes up to 1k it's spec to 1k all right I just thought we'd go in the low voltage range just so you can kind of see that and I'm going down as low as I can go flukes changing ranges again okay I'll pause Again, I like the dual display on the Kiwitz. Okay. 
Okay, I'm just going to move it around so you can see the bar graph move and see the voltage change. You see the Kaiwich, you can kind of watch the voltage changing. The Klein, you can as well. The Fluke changes ranges, flips around. Sometimes, you, you know, you lose the voltage. So the screen goes blank or says OL. So, I don't know. I think I like the Klein better than the Fluke. And I like the Kaiwich better as well. All right, guys, we're back to AC. I'm going to just switch on the switch. I, I put the 6,000 count Kiwits back because I want to see it 20,000 counts or slower because that's usually the problem. Uh, and you know what? Right now, I'm going to leave this in high res and then I'll switch this to 6,000 count, see if it's any faster. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch on. And I think the two Kiwits were a dead even race. I think the orange light on this older one's a little brighter than this new one. I mean, I can definitely see it here, but this one's definitely brighter. Okay, I'll do it one more time. Now, one thing I find interesting, I'm hitting a mechanical switch opening the circuit, and this thing still sees re residue voltage that's not there. So that's kind of interesting. You see zero volts on both these, but this guy, for some reason, thinks there's something there. Okay, one more time. Okay, now here, let's take this off high res. Okay, still shows the voltage. Okay, let's turn them on. I don't think the flute's any faster in, in a 6,000 count. Yeah. I don't know. Didn't seem like it. All right, guys, what I want to do is I'm using this nice Voltcraft, which I need to do a review on this. This is an awesome meter, 40,000 count. I want to um, show what the burden resistance is. You know, so when you're measuring current, you like your test instruments not to interfere with the measurements, right? So when you're measuring current, there is going to be a little resistance that it's going to see as it goes through the meter so the meter can develop a voltage and give you a reading. So in this case, the 118A is 100 ohms 0.41 and microamps. Okay, so let's just see. Let's see what these other guys are. Okay. It would be nice if it was very low. Okay, whoops. Let's go here. Okay, it's essentially the same, 101.87, so around 100 ohms. Okay, let's see what the fluke is. Wow, it's actually about the same as the other two. Okay, let's go to milliamps. Well, milliamps and amps are the same one. That's why they put them here, is they're going to have the same burden voltage for both milliamps and amps. So we only have about 1.8, okay? And... Same milliamp here. Well, actually, yeah. So see, for milliamps, and this guy, we're going to be, well, actually, it's 2.95 ohms. So, yeah, they're all pretty low, I guess. Let's go milliamps right here, 2.95 ohms there. Whoops, can I reach? Wow, that's actually less. Okay. That's interesting. Okay, now let's go to amps. Got to change this up to amps. Wow, 0.01 ohms. So it's pretty darn low. Well, you won't want to develop a lot of power dropping across your, you know, you're trying to read 10 amps, right? Okay, this one's like 0.03, slightly higher. And I guess we stay here. And 0.01, about the same as this one. So this guy's a little bit higher. You know what? While we're here, let's read the voltage on our diodes. Now the Fluke is, does a great job, everybody knows. So let's do that. Now guys, this is a, an LED tester. It's nice that it does LEDs, but it's a diode tester. 
And let's put this on volts, DC. Okay, so yeah, see that's why the Fluke does such a good job. Seven volts is pretty crazy. A lot of meters are around two or three volts. So started off with, you know, the best case scenario probably. Okay, we gotta go to the diodes. Okay, 3.25, so that's pretty good. That's gonna light all, a lot of LEDs. You guys love LEDs, or at least reviewers love to show that, but it's a diode tester, because when you're troubleshooting circuits, it's diodes that die. And high voltage diodes go up to a couple volts, you know, maybe a little higher, or optocouplers, and that's why they, uh, they range it that way. Yeah, so the same voltage, okay? Hey, since the Voltcraft came out to play and help out, he wanted to see what his dial voltage was, and it's 4.4, so that's pretty darn good. Okay, guys, this is a 10 millifarad capacitor, okay? Big old capacitor. Let's see. Now, we know flukes, that's their claim to fame, is the one thing they do really well is read capacitors really fast, like big capacitors. So let's see. Here we go. Wow, look at that. Now... Okay, 8.9. I know this is a little bit under 9 millifarad capacitor, so that sounds about, that's probably about right. And let's come over here and see what the Kiwitz does. All right, so here we go. Wow, that was, that was actually fast. I've had some meters where I'm sitting here waiting for a few seconds. I mean, like five or 10 seconds. Okay, so this is a little over nine mil fares. I'm, this is more like under nine mil fares. So this is, it's reading a little bit high. For capacitors, it says up to 20 mil fares, but it's 4% uh, and 50 counts. So that's pretty good for 4%. Okay, guys, in the fluke, it's 1% plus two digits. So there you go. So a little bit uh, more accuracy. But it only says it goes up to 10 millifarads, where the Kiwitz goes to 20 millifarads. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and read some diodes, okay? See what kind of voltage readings it gives. Okay, that's nice. This is a little shocky diode you can see. Now, let's do the LEDs just because... We want to see what kind of different voltage readings we get. We light up the white one, but it doesn't give a voltage reading, which I'm fine with because it's a diode checker, not an LED checker. And it does get the voltage reading on that, but it doesn't light up. That's kind of interesting. Well, I see a little bit of a glow, maybe. Same thing there. Okay, there's a green one. No voltage reading, though. Blue. Lights it up. It's interesting, lights them up. Orange, and we get 1.8. So, yeah. So for diodes, for high voltage diodes and all that, it's gonna read them fine. For LEDs, it might light them up, but might not read the voltage. You know, like I say, it's a diode checker, not an LED checker, right? Uh, everybody likes to check LEDs, but kind of gives them a bad rap because they're diode checkers. Uh, plus, AC, and the other two are not marked. So it's always a uh, cross pattern. So plus, minus, AC, AC. Okay. So let's put the minus on the plus. And then we'll check the other pin. We should get a dial drop. There we go. Dial drop. And over here, we'll get two dial drops. And there we go. Now, okay. So if I come back over here and put the positive on the opposite corner then I should get just the opposite readings, showing the other two diodes are working as well. And then going this way, you get two diodes. So, bridge rectifier, it works. All right, guys, so now we want to look the NCV, the non-contact, and the live, okay? So I plug my uh, power cord into my receptacle over there and just come over here. And that says low. Okay, and then if I'm a little bit of ways, you can see if I'm only about inch, just barely reads it. 
If I'm up closer, like actually touching it, it goes to high. But what if we don't read a voltage and we're not sure yet? Or we do and we're still not sure. So then what you can do is go to live, hit this, it says live, and see how that's flashing green? So we gotta put a probe in that one, okay? And then I'll come over here and go to the receptacle. And there we go, we get the light saying we have a live voltage, okay? All right guys, that's kind of interesting. It shows the temperature without the probes in. And here, let's go ahead and plug the probe in. I've had it in my hand, so I'm kind of wondering if I warmed it up. Okay, it warmed it up a little bit, it looks like. So, uh, oh, it's, maybe it's dropping. Okay, it's, well, look. Okay, I'm gonna hit the max min just for fun. Okay, and then I'll hold the temperature. We're heating that thing up a little bit. Okay, okay, then what I wanna do is I just wanna go, there's the min where I started, I guess. Here's the max. So just kinda wanna show the max min feature too. Hey guys. So I want to again say thank you for Kai Wheat for sending this to me for free along with this shirt. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm really excited to use this more on the bench. 20,000 counts. It seems super quick. I, I'm actually surprised. I thought it would be a tad slower than the 6,000 count meter. But I, it, it, I mean it looked every bit as fast. Uh, and I thought it was just as fast as the fluke. I thought they were all reading measurements great so hope you guys like this video now fluke does do capacitance readings super fast but i think you might agree for a 10 millifarad capacitor this is fairly quick a few seconds right it's pretty quick so uh great display i love the dual display and um i guess i could turn it on there but yeah i love the dual display all that kind of stuff and let me know what you guys think, uh, but to me, I think it's a winner. I'm gonna put the link down below. Uh, Kai Wheat sent me a link, I believe. I'm gonna put that down below. The Kai Wheat store, let me tell you about that real quick. The Kai Wheat store, if you go down there, they've given me a code for you guys to use and you get a discount when you go to their store and buy. Okay, so use that discount code. You can buy anything, the hand tools they have. You know, they got lots of hand tools. And I like these hand tools. I'm going to give a set of these away. Uh, I've got some people picked out from Thanksgiving. So, guys, don't worry. I just haven't had time to ship because I got, got a cold and missed a couple days of work. And, God, it's been a bad year for colds. But, anyway, uh, I'm going to pick out some winners for Christmas, too. And I'll probably ship that after Christmas. Have family in town during that week. So, But, yeah, I'm going to give some meters away and stuff like that. So, send me an email if you want a meter or if you want some hand tools. And if you're a patron, you have an extra chance to win. I'll put your name in twice, okay? Um, but yeah, I got a bunch of things to review that people have sent me. Uh, this is awesome. Thank you, Kai Wheats. Really surprised. I wasn't expecting a 20,000 count meter to come. Wasn't expecting a meter. I was just thinking I was gonna get a shirt. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And sorry about the length. And by the way, uh, tell your other reviewers, multimeter reviewers, to tell you what the tolerance is when they're taking all these voltage readings and all these resistance and current readings. It's like, what the heck's a point if you don't know what the tolerance is supposed to be? And if you know you're measuring what you're supposed to be getting. Now, by the way, if they say they have references, they're not getting those calibrated. I doubt it very much. That's expensive to do. And I mean, I have those reference resistors. They're not calibrated. I've had those for years. Now, are they still reading correctly? Probably. They're probably dead on, but they haven't been calibrated. So if you don't have it calibrated, it's not a reference. So they were reference resistors. They're not reference resistors anymore because they're not calibrated. I can't stand by them. So yeah. So ask your reviewers to do that kind of, and that, uh, you know, continuity fire stick method trying to start. <laughs> hey guys, my video card ran out. So I guess it's telling me, it's trying to give me a hint. But anyway, I, I watch these camping videos and I watch these guys with these flint sticks trying to start fires and I just think about these crazy guys doing meter reviews. 
flipping stick. I mean, continuity measurements aren't taken that way, guys. They just aren't. If I saw someone in the lab, a technician, I'd have to come out the hall and talk to him about that because purposeful measurements. I mean, my heck. It's funny. Well, I guess if you're trying to sell a hobbyist meter to some guy that doesn't know how to take continuity measurements, then do the fire stake method. But otherwise, stop doing that. It's embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> Another rant. Hey, thanks, guys. This meter's awesome. Continuity's fast, loud, and I like the light that lights up, too. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So what do you guys think? Hey, I want to give Kyrie's two thumbs up. Thanks so much, guys. And I want to give uh, my patrons two thumbs up, as always. Appreciate you guys. And I really appreciate you guys. I'm gonna, I've got a couple of people picked out for some multimeters and some tools. So, um, yeah, I'm going to ask you for addresses pretty soon. And uh, what else? I've got, uh, yeah, so I was sick, like I said, trying to catch up at work. So I just fell behind. But, but I, I'm going to try to get those shipped out before Christmas. And the ones that the people I pick at Christmas time, I'll send those out after the new year, okay? So thanks for watching, guys. And I'm gonna keep this one though. <laughs> Sorry. I do have a I do have some other really nice meters though. So I'm gonna give away some meters. So uh yeah, put your name in, send me an email, tell me what you want, and uh I'll just put you in the pile. Right now there's not a lot of people actually. <laughs> I mean Probably half the people that have asked for meters are going to get them. So, yeah. <laughs> and then the patrons don't even know they're going to get something. So, yeah, I just appreciate you guys. I got to stop talking. This has been a really long video. Sorry about that. But let me know if you like uh, the method and if how I should change it. It takes time to show you the insights and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you'd like to see in meter reviews. Okay? Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.